us. Hi, Mo's back. Hi, everybody. Hi, TV world, YouTube land. <laughs> Inhale deeply. Ready to yoga? <laughs> here and we're making soap we did a YouTube poll the other day and you guys unanimously wasn't unanimously gardening and soap were big ones and we were actually going to do gardening but it's raining so we're doing soap. soap is good I've always wanted to learn how to do soap so this is perfect so the recipe that I I traditionally use is just olive oil extra virgin olive oil and coconut milk I changed it up just a little bit and I'm gonna use some coconut oil coconut milk and olive oil. So there's three ingredients to this aside from the lye. But the reason that I chose to do that is I'm fairly reptilian. My skin is so dry that um, I have to be really careful with detergents of any kind. And so um, the soap that I use isn't the most cleansing soap, but it's really moisturizing. So this bar is a really good every day. It's, it's low on the cleansing, but it's high on the emollient, but olive oil soap in general is pretty mild. So this is going to be a really good everyday bar for all of you, especially those of you with dry skin. Next, which I also have dry skin. Yeah. Okay, okay so let's get started. We're going to start with Oh, safety. Let, let me show you. Let me let me demo it. Yo, -o. I am your soap minion here <laughs> to help you get clean. <laughs> Tell me what to do. I am your minion. <laughs> Anything Karini says, I will do. <laughs> so the the reason that we have this whole getup is lye is super caustic, not really bad in this form. Although it is pulling moisture out of the air, I can tell by the texture of it. Um, but as soon as you add it with water, a chemical reaction occurs and it will actually boil. It will burn or scald milk. It gets that hot. And so we want to take our liquid, which in our case is going to be coconut milk, and freeze it. So that's in the freezer right now doing its thing. And we're going to take, for a bowl this size, we're going to take about five minutes to integrate all of the lye slowly, 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 like a quarter of a teaspoon at a time. I'm so excited to see it. Into the milk. And we'll do that outside where there's a lot of ventilation. You don't want to inhale this. I've seen women on YouTube making videos in their house without respiration. Thank you, Mo. <laughs> and so it's super Thank gnarly. You, We're going to be safe. <laughs> we got to keep Mo's lungs virgin. Yes. Mm -hmm. So another thing when you're making soap is to use only equipment for soap making. Like this is no longer a bread proofing tub. It is a soap blending tub. This same thing, anything that comes into contact with the lye or comes under some sort of chemical reaction is designated lye only, soap only, and I just keep them all in the jar out of the kitchen. So, um, and you'll see that I have like written on my buckets. I went ahead and filled up the sink with vinegar Vinegar is acidic and it will help neutralize anything that the lye is on. So as soon as we pour, you know, the lye out of this, I'll put this bowl in the vinegar sink. I get in the habit of never putting anything that's touched any raw soap um, on the counter. I put it only in the sink. So you'll come up with some sort of process that works for you, but lye burns are a really big deal. So. I couldn't do it in this with exposed skin. I have bare feet. So I want to make sure that every bit of most skin is covered up when she's out there mixing them. <gasps> so exciting. Very exciting. Very exciting. Do you want like a ratty sweatshirt? Sure. Ready? Yes. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so the ingredients in the recipe is going to be below. I'll give you everything that you need there. And there's a website that I use for calculating recipes and you can create your own soap and scale it accordingly based on numerous variables. I've made, um, I scaled a recipe to do this 40 ounce and then these one pound molds. So it should fit in there perfectly. But I'll go ahead and put the soap calc um, website down below too because it's really an amazing tool. It just lets you develop your own recipe. That's awesome. Super fun. 
safely. Okay, let's Good. do it. So you just take the tiniest amount of lye and just kind of keep melting. Here it goes. So using the coconut milk, it just makes it that much more. It, it's called super fatting, basically. Instead of just having water, yeah. you're adding an ingredient with a lot of fat in it. So all of the fat that you're adding is in addition to what the lye is capable of converting that kind of unconverted fat is what's going to make your soap more nourishing. Okay. I went ahead and mixed the olive and coconut oil. I didn't melt the coconut oil like many recipes call for because this is 104 degrees because of the chemical reaction. Mm. Coconut milk melts at 76-ish. So it's not necessary. It will melt when we're mixing it. So go ahead and pour all of that into our soap mixture. Now you guys are going to ask if you can do it without an immersion blender. I do not know. Um, there's tons of information on the web. I really don't, I mean, people have been making soap for hundreds of years and emulsion blenders haven't been around, but I just don't know. I haven't done it. So you'll have some research to do. <laughs> can I take this off? Yeah. <laughs> Giddy up. Oh my gosh. And God, I'm like, not claustrophobic. Kind of chafy. Now, when you start this out, I like to just give it a really mellow kind of stir um, before you start blending it because I cut down on the water. And what that does is it makes soap set up a lot faster, but it also makes the soap come to trace a lot quicker. Now trace is what you're looking for in soap making and we want to mix it until it looks like cake batter, just a little bit thicker than it is now, but not so much that um, it leaves a big trace. So if you move the blender along the top, you're gonna to see this ridge that doesn't sink back into the soap. You want the slight trace that you can see and then it'll just sink right back in the soap. And that's when it's perfect to pour in your molds. And you also wanna make sure that you don't introduce a bunch of air. You don't want to whip air into it because then you'll have bubbles in your soap. So I like to tilt the whole thing and my blender to get any trapped air that's underneath this little surface out. Now we'll just blend. Now some oils, um, some soap bases come to trace a lot faster than others. If you're making uh, pure olive oil soap, uh, they could take 20 minutes to trace, where this one traces pretty quickly. It's usually a couple minutes. This one is a, it's a wearing commercial, and it was, um, I bought it used through Amazon's warehouse, and I want to say it was like $40 instead of 80 <laughs> When emulsification happens, and it happens pretty quickly, you'll see that there's no more oil. There's like a little oil slick on top. That goes away. Trace happens just after emulsification. So that's kind of a like little precursor. So what to look for. So this is called cold processing soap. There's cold process and hot process. Where the hot process, you actually cook it, and it works really good to use like a big crock pot. Okay. Um, and you cook it for a couple hours. It's quite a lengthy process. Um, and what that does is it actually cooks out the lye. So the, all of the chemical reactions that are in the lye happen during that cooking process. Cold process doesn't work that way. It takes several months for the soap to actually cure before you can use it. So what's happening is any residual lye is going to be absorbed and, and um, converted in the oils as it cures. Then last summer I made, I think, 12 different recipes 
and let them all age for various times. I started using them at four months and then I used them at six months and then a year later just to see what hardness was like over time and kind of how the, how the, the soaps, um, how they lasted and, and how they aged, which is super fun. So this, it looks like we've got emulsification happening. I don't see any slicks of oil on the top of the surface. And right after emulsification is trace. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir just a little bit on low, and I'm just gonna look for it to get just slightly thicker like cake batter. This is light trace. When you lift the mixer up and you move it around, you can see that it leaves a pattern on the surface for just a second, and then it's absorbed right back into the soap. So there are a few little air bubbles in here. If you want to go all super picky, you can um, take a chopstick or something and kind of stir and poke at them and reduce them or pop them. But um, they really don't bother me that much. I'm not selling my soap commercially, so it's not a huge big deal. So this is it. Now the hard part is to wait. The thing with cold process soap is that you it's quicker to make and it usually comes together in just a few minutes, but you have to let it cure for all of that residual lye to kind of be absorbed and convert that oil. Because this is an olive oil based soap, meaning it's 80% olive oil, it takes even longer to cure. So my general rule of thumb is six months, no less on olive oil soap. You can safely use it after four months, but it will just disintegrate and your bar will, it won't last very long. And this is the finished product? Yeah, so this is what it looks like and it's, it's interesting that um, mm. it's so yellow and it turns so white when it's finished. Now, these guys will need to be cut and there's an ideal time for cutting them. This soap in the past, it's been about 22 hours, so I will unmold them, and you can tell if you try to pull on one of the molds, you can tell if it breaks free, um, and then you cut them. If you wait too long to cut them, this happens. So you see this where it just kind of got crumbly and hard, and you lost that really clean edge because this soap had set up and it was a little bit too dry when I cut it. So that was my first bar. Then the second bar, I was a little nervous. <laughs> and so I, I pulled it out of its mold too soon and cut it. And now I've got this kind of, I don't know if you can see it on there, but there's a, a slightly rough texture. If you imagine like cutting through not quite cooled bread and it drags a little bit and it's just a little bit gummy. So you wanna make sure that you don't have either one of these issues, and if you do, just make notes with your on your recipe um, that that was too long or not long enough. And it's nice to have a large bar like this because when you unmold it, you can cut one and then test. <laughs> not if you go over it, but if you get the draggy, and as soon as you wash with this soap, you can use, wash it once, like this texture goes away, but if you're giving it as a gift, it just, looks not super nice because you want that super clean, smooth cut. So 22 hours for this one. Now that was this summer. So I don't know how much humidity, I just don't know. I don't know what's relative to the whole soap making world. But for those of you bakers, these, these bench scrapers are super ideal for cutting nice. flats. And then these, these are one pound loaves that'll make three really substantial bars of soap or thin or four thinner bars and then I can get seven or eight out of this guy. Thanks, oh no. Corinne. You're welcome. Yeah. I feel smarter and sexier and cleaner. Of course. You're right to be. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoyed having Mo here. Thank you. Well, I certainly did. Thank you. Yeah. And you guys will tackle this at home. There are a lot of variables to making soap and I didn't give you specific like what I've learned along the way. 
Um, but read up on it. I studied it for about a year because I was petrified of it. For whatever reason, I just thought the lie was going to kill me. Or <laughs> it's like a big science experiment. Yeah. It's like alchemy. Yeah, it's really neat. And it's super fun and really rewarding. And then you get like these beautiful gifts to take as hostess presents or to give as gifts to your friends. So thank you for being here. I'm going to go ahead and let these set up. Tomorrow I'll pull them um, and I'll cut them and I'll get some of that footage to integrate into this video so you all don't, you don't get deprived of actually seeing what the whole bar looks like in its early stages. And then once it dries and cures, it will whiten up and turn into this scrumptious loaf. Beautiful. It smells really yummy too. Oh, and you can add fragrances. You can add colors. Um, I'm just kind of a purist, so I really, I really love the simplicity of this recipe. Thank you for being here and we'll see you in the next video.